Okay, uh, good evening everyone. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be here with a uh, uh, great, great thanks to, to Capitano Coaches Clinic for giving me this opportunity to share uh, my ideas, my experience, my knowledge with uh, fellow basketball coaches. Uh, it is a uh, it is a hard time that all of us are going through uh, with uh, this virus everywhere around the world. So the least we can do is just uh, stay home, stay safe, uh, stay with our families and uh, make sure we, we try to keep uh, ourselves updated because uh, when uh, all this uh, finishes, we should be ready uh, to get back uh, in the truck and uh, do what we love and uh, this is coach basketball play basketball or whatever that is so uh, for today our uh, our topic is uh, building the month-to-month -month defense uh, we said that this could apply to teams under 18 and uh, until the men's team uh, personally my my opinion my idea is that uh, all that should uh, start from uh, from teams under 16. Uh, definitely in Europe, if you see under 16 teams playing basketball, you will understand that uh, most of them uh, have great fundamentals offensively and defensively in all the different concepts. In uh, Asia, it's a little bit different. Uh, under 16 teams, they don't have... Uh, uh, so with fundamentals when it comes to to team defense and uh, to the basics uh, it's more offensive uh, orientated the game uh, but as i told you if you are asking me i would start building my under 16 team with some of those principles and then move to under 15 and uh, to the men's team uh, at the beginning we'll go over a slideshow that uh, will uh, will present uh, uh, some principles and uh, some ways that uh, we go through how we separate our defense and some ways that we go through to try to build our defense. On the second part of the sl second slideshow, uh, we'll exhibit uh, uh, some uh, diagrams with a few drills that you could use and uh, in order to, to start building uh, and developing your, your defense because everything starts uh, from simple to complicated, from parts to whole. So we have to start working on our defense from the one against one and then go to the five on five. So let's go on our first, uh, on our first slide show for developing our man to man defense. Uh, here you can see strengths and weaknesses uh, for our man to man defense. Uh, on a strength, we say that every player needs to learn one-to-one -one defensive principles. Why this is this is something strong for uh, for our defense? Because we believe that uh, all the players should be fundamentally solid, and wherever you put them in the future, they will be able to to adjust and uh, have a solid base, so they can uh, get into any defensive system uh, you ask them to. The man-to-man -man defense has uh, many variations. Um, what does that mean when we say that we have many variations? Man-to-man -man defense can be played straight man-to-man, -man, can be played uh, close man-to-man, -man, can be played uh, switching man-to-man, -man, can play denying man-to-man, -man, uh, it can be a pack line defense. So there are so many different uh, kinds of man-to-man uh, -man defense that uh, once you know the basic principles and uh, you try to build your own philosophy on that, uh, then it will be very, it will be easier for your players and for your team to adjust in that in this, and it will be much more difficult for all the opponents to recognize and react on everything you try to do on on your defensive end. And uh, something extremely important for me. Because, as I said, when we talk about uh, man -to -man, building man-to-man -man defense, my, my idea is that we should start from under 16. It's preparation for future basketball. 
that teaching man-to-man -man defense and developing a, a good defensive player and a good defensive system, uh, it will give the, the opportunity to your players uh, to go to the next level. Because uh, we all know that uh, talent, offensive talent is for sure good, but uh, when you need to give an opportunity to a young player, most of the coaches, that's what we do. When you need to give an opportunity to a young player to get some minutes, then you expect him to start from defense. So knowing the fundamentals and being a good defensive player will give him the chance to get some playing time, get opportunity, prepare for the future and go to the next level defensively. Now, let's talk a little bit about the weaknesses of man-to-man -man defense. Uh, the weaknesses is it's it's clear that there is there is a lot to teach. Man-to-man -man defense, I'd say, it never ends, never stops. You have to have your basics, you have to have your system, you have to have your principles. But all that uh, they they have so many details that you're gonna have to go through almost every day in practice and that that will take on the second weakness as we say there it will take a lot of time for your players to successfully run a good man-to-man -man defense so it's all about repetition it's all about details and uh, we definitely need to have a lot of patience as coaches if we believe in our defensive system to be able to successfully run it the last weakness, in my opinion, is uh, you are unable to hide to hide weak players. Uh, for me, I have I have a quote, and I always say to my players that team defense is as strong as the weakest defender. So, what we mean by that? Even if you have four extremely tough and good defensive players in uh, in your five uh, man lineup uh, if one player is is a weak link uh, then your whole team defense uh, will get down to be as weak as the weakest uh, defensive player so this is very important for everybody to understand because uh, defense uh, is a team thing and uh, it starts from the man it goes back to the team and it ends uh, with the man so some man-to-man -man defense rules. Uh, these are some basic rules and all of the things that we talk about, it's, uh, it can be, uh, we can add, we can uh, like put some of our own uh, things uh, according to our own philosophy. But every man-to-man -man defense starts with ball pressure. Uh, the first line of the defense starts with the pressure on the ball. So we do not open the door with a drop step. Uh, we try to contain and stay in front of the ball the whole time. We are using diagonal long steps uh, to guide the ball handler right or left. We have to keep our center of gravity in our base. We don't lean our body forward. We don't lean back. We have to have a stable base. We have to have our keeps we keep to, to keep our hands active and all these things. These are the, the details that we're going to use. We, we're going to have to teach when we talk about ball pressure because ball pressure, as I said, is the first line of our defense and everything starts from there. Then uh, in our philosophy, we have no middle penetration. So we have to make sure that uh, we don't allow the ball handler or whoever gets the ball to attack in the middle of our defense. Uh, again, as I said, that depends and that varies on your philosophy, on your personnel. It's very important to build your defense according to your personnel. Okay, I'll give you an example about this no middle penetration. Let's say uh, Real Madrid and, and Coach Lasso uh, wants on every closeout defense to force to the middle because uh, he has a, a great shot blocker in the paint and because he believes that uh, the minute you 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 force somebody in the middle and you collapse inside you create more deflections so these are the the uh, based on your philosophy for us we got no middle penetration we want to keep the ball on the side we want to create a strong and weak side 
every time we play defense. We don't want any help from defenders one pass away. That means that strong side, let's say, does not over help. We don't over help from, from strong side. We'll jump to the ball a little bit. We'll control our man. We will shrink the gaps. So we will make the space that the ball handler sees to penetrate smaller so they cannot have uh, the, the confidence that they can attack these gaps but we do not over help from one pass away okay then we go to the face cuts uh, players away from the ball we never allow any face cuts we always first between the ball and our player every time they try to cut they have to find us first there we have to beat them to the spot and make sure we bump and force them away so take away all the face cuts something extremely important and i know all all of us coaches have uh, the same problems the, the last two uh, rules i think uh, we all struggle to convince our players and make them understand that that's how it has to be the players have to move with the ball we they have to move when the ball is in the air we don't tell them they don't expect the ball to get passed to somebody and then try to close out or try to help or something when the ball is in the air all five players should be moving with the ball and the most important thing for me the most important uh, rule for my defense uh, it's the communication uh, you have to be talkative on defense you know all the players tend to be very vocal in offense they need to be they like to be very vocal in offense but uh, they don't like to talk on defense so what we have to do is convince them that they should start talking on defense now let's go to our man-to-man -man defense position in basics we we separate this in three parts uh, we have the on ball defense we have the deny or open deny defense which is basically the one pass one pass distance uh, defense as we would say and we have the help defense which is which is two or more passes distance let's go to the on ball defense uh, everybody needs to have a desire to be a great defender uh, i'll tell you something uh, basketball is sometimes they say it's about uh, talent but talent it's only about offense my take on on, on the game is that uh, for sure uh, if you are a very talented player you can easily get to the basket or get buckets or shoot the ball or create or something but uh, even if we take anyone any random guy from anywhere we can make him a great defensive player it's all about understanding the fundamentals, yes, but it's all about desire. We cannot take anyone and make him a great offensive player because that takes talent. But for defense, if we manage to get our players the desire to be great defenders, then we will have a great defensive team. Second key about the on-ball defense is uh, staying balanced stance. It's very important and crucial to stay in a stance the whole time have good balance as i told you your body weight should be in the middle of your base if you lean forward if you make a big step if you open uh, with a direct step to the basket then the offense will take advantage of that and will attack uh, on on every on every opportunity they get for our uh, principles now and uh, for our uh, for, for our defensive plan we we slightly overplay the middle to force the offensive player sideline or baseline as we said uh, in our in our uh, tactics we don't want anyone to penetrate from the middle uh, some other teams like that so if you don't want to give middle you have to slightly overplay the middle uh, so you can force to the side or the baseline uh, for us if, if somebody penetrates middle it makes it easier for the offense because after you get to the middle every player is one pass distance so it's easy for the ball handler 
to find every open pass. So that's why we, we, we don't want anyone to get to the middle. We have to keep an arm's length distance at all times, especially this is when the player uh, with the ball has the right to dribble the ball or has his dribble, has his, has a ball on, on dribbling, has the ball live. So that's where we keep one arm's length distance to be able to react on every move, to be able to anticipate, to be able to, to slide and beat the offensive player to the spot and close uh, every open lane he can see. If he picks up his dribble, definitely uh, we attack the ball with both hands and uh, we try to, to interrupt and interfere on, on every passing lane and create a steal or, or a deflection. And um, something that I, 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 I do have a hard time convincing my players is to keep their eyes on the opponent's chest or waist. What does that exactly mean? In simple words, it means that the defensive player should always be lower than the offensive player. So if the offensive player with the ball is dribbling on the spot, trying to protect the ball on a low stance, then the defensive player should get even lower. Uh, our eyes uh, should be on the opponent's chest or waist so we can get low, we have good balance, we become wide and we can uh, create problem with uh, our active hands in his dribble. Now, the one pass distance uh, position or as we say, deny or open deny defense. Uh, why, why I say that? Like the deny or open deny defense. In younger ages, in younger ages, uh, we tend to teach the deny position when we are one pass distance. But uh, at the higher level, uh, I don't think uh, at the high level at this point there is any team that would play deny defense. Almost, if not all the teams, almost all the teams uh, play open deny defense. And why is that? Because the, the skill level the abilities and the athleticism of the players nowadays at uh, the high level are, uh, are very high, are extremely high. So if you play up, if you play deny defense, if you play deny defense, that gives a lot of space to the player with the ball to play against his defender one on one. And uh, as I told you, the skill level and the athleticism is at a very high level at this point. Uh, with the players so they can easily beat their players one on one so that's why at the high level we we want to play open deny defense which is like opening up and cheating a little bit more to the ball to make uh, the the player with the ball see that there is no gap there is no pass passing uh, to the basket, direct lane to the basket. So we intimidate him and we force him to try to do something else instead of playing one-on-one. -on -one. So on the deny position, we had one hand and one foot in the passing lane. If it's important to teach, especially the younger kids, that we deny with our hand in the passing lane, of course, with all the details that we said, palm, turned facing the, the, the opponent and everything uh, and not with our chest uh, on the passing lane that will give easy backdoor cuts to every offensive player so it's very important to put one foot and one hand in the passing lane and with the other foot and the other hand stay below the offensive players level so we can control every backdoor cut uh, then we have our chest a little bit towards the opponent. This, again, I'm telling you, it's for the deny position at the younger ages. When we go to the higher level and we have open deny position, then our chest uh, almost sits in the middle and we are in a position that we can also see our player and the ball and be able to react on both. And as I said, denying position, eyes, over lead shoulder to see both, over right or left lead shoulder to see both. In open deny position, uh, we are back 
and we have again our head in a position that without moving we can see both player and uh, and ball and now we go to the help defense the help defense it's uh, as we said can be two or more passes distance from the ball uh, in help defense we always be in ball you man stance what does that mean uh, we are always between the ball and our player always between the ball and our player and we are in a good position uh, that when we point our hands out like pistols that's how we used to say it we point like pistols we point to the ball and to our man and we are able to see both at the same time when the basketball is on the weak side and below the free throw line the players two passes away will often be in either high eye or low eye what is the high eye or the low eye uh, let's say we draw a theoretic line between the nail between the middle of the paint and a position under the basket so if we draw a straight line from the middle of the free throw line until under the basket that's like the letter i so the position under the basket is the low i position and the position almost at the nail in the middle of the free throw line it's the high i position every time we are two passes distance or more we should be in one of those two positions that's how our help side defense should work so we keep an eye, we, we keep in our in our mind the whole time that two passes away we should be on a low eye or a high eye position uh, hope uh, until now all that all, all that was uh, was clear we will have our time for for questions at the end and now uh, a couple of tips uh, for our team if we want to play good defense balance is everything on defense balance when it comes to uh, individual balance when it comes to the players balance and when it comes to the team balance okay so that has to do with our positions and with our stance uh, second key is stay in defensive defensive stance for the entire possession it's not uh, unusual to see a, a, a team killing themselves on defense and uh, playing like uh, for 20, 21, 22 seconds uh, defense and relaxing in the last couple of seconds and getting beat and uh, getting scored on. So we have to stay in defensive stance the entire possession. And uh, what I say also my players is that our defense starts with the shot when we shoot the ball. So when we shoot the ball, in our offense that's when our defense starts and uh, it finishes with the rebound uh, it doesn't finish if we con contest the shot it doesn't finish if we uh, push our man if we play hard no it, it finishes only if we get the possession back and uh, for sure if you don't talk you don't play defense uh, this is the the most uh, the most uh, the reason that i i kind of uh, punish i would say my players the most so if my players don't play defense they have to run if my, my players don't play defense or don't talk on defense they have to repeat the drill until until they they do that uh, it's very important to to get in their system that um, few things are basics and we cannot skip them there is no uh, shortcuts to playing defense it has to be the hard way we have to have balance uh, stay in a stance play hard and talk the whole time okay now we'll go to some uh, drills we will just mention them and we'll see them on the next part of our slideshow uh, how we execute them and uh, we're talking about uh, on ball defense we have stance and footwork and we have closeout defense so we we separate our on ball defense when we try to teach uh, in these two uh, aspects one is the stance against a player with the ball and our footwork and the second one is uh, our defense when we close out on a player receiving the ball 
both of these situations are on bold differences. They are on bold differences, but they are completely different concepts. Uh, on, on the stance and, and the footwork, uh, we try to use some uh, very simple drills and uh, uh, I assure you that uh, all these drills can apply from uh, 16 years old for sure, 18, and uh, to the men's team. And uh, men uh, players are, are never too old to execute these drills. Uh, we will talk in more detail about every drill when we go to the next part of our presentation uh, with the slideshows uh, with, with the drills. So first one is a step slide. Um, we don't want negative step. We need our lead uh, foot to, to point to the direction of movement, etc. We will talk about more details when we get to the drills. Another one is a mirror drill. We have two players holding a ball and one is leading and the other one is following. Uh, we go one-on-one -on -one definitely with uh, hands behind the back to focus on the footwork. We go one-on-one -on -one with free hands and we try to turn the dribbler uh, with slides of running defense. And then we go to the hardest part of uh, teaching defense. I think the one-on-one -on -one full court drill uh, uh, and we make it competitive. We like either uh, keep score or get, keep stops and see who wins. So after that, we go on stationary two-man guard ball and open deny or deny. So we got two offensive players, two defensive players stationary. They move the ball. We adjust our position. And then we go to the three-man guard the ball and open deny. Uh, we focus on a few things. We don't want the players to close their feet. We want them when they slide or when they move on defense to stay at the same level. I, we don't, I, don't, I don't like to see my players moving up and down uh, like, uh, I don't know, just uh, one step uh, getting up high, the second step getting low. That makes them slow and that keeps them out of balance. So every time they move, their center of gravity should be at the same level. They have to keep their hands active all the time, all the time. And uh, I don't want to see uh, more than three, four slides at the same direction. Uh, allow me to to disagree with, with many coaches, uh, let's say for some sliding drills. If we do it for conditioning, I can accept that. But if we do it for teaching uh, fundamentals and slides and basketball defense, uh, I think it doesn't work. We never ever see in, uh, in, in basketball any player using more than three or four slides at the same direction. He will either use running defense or he will either slide to the opposite direction the next time. It's three or four slides, the proper way, uh, focusing on the, on, the, on the little details and doing them as aggressive as, as possible. Now, let's go to the closeouts. Uh, we have a drill that we, get, we, we have the players in pairs using their footwork, small steps uh, with low stance touching each other and uh, then closing out two three steps close out uh, we have groups of four in the paint they touch and they close out but in different directions i will show you with the slides and uh, they follow the dribbler one or two dribbles right and left so they can close out stay in a stance and have the first reaction uh, some drills with the close out drive and help we focus a lot on communication on this drill, a lot of communication. Uh, we, have, we have a box uh, formation that we pass and we close out and we play half court two on two. We have a six player formation at the half court. Uh, again, we go th three on three on the half court. And then we have uh, five against uh, four against five uh, closest man rule. So we have five players stationed outside, they pass the ball, four players should close out, communicate and get uh, the closest man and go to the help. So you, as I said, we'll see these drills in a bit. Uh, here, a couple of things. On a close out defense, most important, as we said before, remember, you move with the ball. The ball is in the air, the player is on the move. Uh, we don't expect the, the ball to get to the man and then 
react. That would be too late. So we need to sprint. We need to sprint as fast as possible, the two thirds of the distance. And in the last one third, we make small steps. We keep our hands up, we close out and our body weight should be on the back foot. Okay, so we are ready to react on uh, the closeout offense of, uh, of the offensive player. After all that, we combined, uh, we went uh, two on two, three on three, and then we combined the, the closeout. And now it's time to go to the shell drill. I think everybody knows and everybody executes the shell drill. Uh, let's start with the stationary foreman uh, passing the ball and then we take our positioning and we communicate i got ball i got pass i got the help uh, second uh, part of uh, our shell drill is uh, passing and cutting again let's go back to what we said and remember that we said no face cuts so always we have to jump to the ball we have to beat our man to the spot and uh, not let him use a face cut third uh, part of teaching the shell drill is driving in the gaps uh, no baseline drives now we just drive in the gaps we help we jump to the ball we stop the ball and we recover uh, as we said we are open deny one drop step stopping the ball shrinking the gap one drop step closing out to our man after that we go to baseline drives and uh, we stop the ball from the baseline, we drop from the wing, and uh, the man that gets beat takes the second pass. We will explain that as well uh, when we go to the slideshow with the drills. Uh, then we go to driving the gaps from 45 all the way. I mean, if we get beat, definitely no middle, and we get beat from 45, uh, and uh, our man gets to the basket, how we use a three-man rotation, and the uh, last part is a uh, screen away parallel and vertical uh, screens uh, we got two rules there we either go through or switch okay uh, the most the most important thing for the players to understand because we've seen to, to be a good defensive team we have to keep on our in our minds that we ha we need to help the helper help the helper is the the key rule for everything we will do in team defense because uh, all the differences all the teams all the teams in the world i think in every level you can see at least uh, the first rotation you can see at least the first man helping but uh, good teams uh, get over the second rotation you have to to get to the third and the fourth rotation if you want to be a good defensive team and this is not that easy now we're going uh, at the off ball screens defense so uh, we said about our defense was uh, on the ball was one pass one pass distance and was away from the ball we saw how everybody works when uh, we try to adjust on the ball from our help side. Now we need to see when we have off ball movement, how we defend. So we have turnout screens. Uh, in the turnout screens, where there is a diamond formation or anything, we trail, we become a shadow and uh, we hide behind our opponent's bag, etc. That goes we said when we defend against uh, theoretically good shooters, okay, uh, because uh, from the scouting, if we see something else, then we adjust our defense. Then we have pin down screens, uh, whether it's zipper screens or uh, it could be staggers or something, or turn out staggers or anything. Uh, when we have the ball uh, at the same side with the screen, we try to deny the screen. When we have the ball at the opposite side, let's say we, we connect the two rims with one line. 
if the ball is one side and the screen is on the other side, and then we can either trail or go through. Uh, we have the cross screens for the bigs. We jump from the top or the bottom side. Everything depends on your philosophy. Some teams even trail with the big. Uh, and we have also diagonal picks for the big guys where we either jump from the top or bottom again. And uh, we, we react uh, on this uh, situation. Again, we will see this with more details in a bit. Last part uh, is the pick and roll defense for guards uh, or for bigs. But uh, this one and the next one, uh, I, I, I deal with them with, with a completely, with a different way. What, what does that mean? Like a completely different concept of defense. So I am building in my teams the man-to-man -man defense and I apply a complete different or separate, I would say, a complete separate session or sessions to the pick and roll defense and the transition defense. So we, here we have pick and roll for defense for guards. They either go over, under, they side, they reject the screen, they switch or, or, or anything. And the bigs either have to play high hedge, flat hedge, they need to drop, they have to play ice defense, switch or, or anything. So this is a, a different aspect and different uh, part of the game when it comes to our defense, as well as the transition defense. The transition defense, uh, as I said before, it starts from our offense. As soon as we shoot the ball, our transition defense starts. It depends on how many players we need to send to the offensive rebound, uh, how many players we want to go back, who wants to, who, who we want to stop the ball, who protects the paint, uh, how we matching up on every transition situation, whether it's uh, three on two, four on two, five on three, or five on two, four on one, I don't know, whatever we, we can uh, deal with. So, as I said, pick and roll defense and transition defense get different sessions when teaching our off our defense. Uh, building our man-to-man -man defense has to do with the ball defense, one pass distance defense, help side defense. Uh, always tell your players, always tell your players that they have to play man-to-man -man defense with zone mentality and zone defense with man-to-man -man mentality. What does that mean? Uh, when you play man-to-man -man defense with zone mentality, because this is our, our, our subject now, the man-to-man -man defense, it means that you have to be ready and willing to help. This is the, 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 what we, we try to make our players understand, that when you play man-to-man -man defense, it's not about having your man, chasing your man, and not caring about anything or anybody else. It's a team defense, and you need to play man-to-man -man defense with defense with zone mentality, meaning that you need to be able and ready to help everyone. So, thank you very much. That was uh, that was the first part of uh, of our uh, presentation. Now we will go to the second part where we started talking about uh, about the way the the methodology of of our uh, man-to-man -man defense, we, we talked about the principles, we talked about what we want to do, and uh, now we will go to our methodology. That's the, the kind of drills uh, we saw before, and uh, we'll see some uh, diagrams with, uh, with all these drills, and uh, we'll try to explain them a little bit more, and uh, maybe give you an idea of uh, how you can start uh, building your defense using some of those drills if you like them, if you feel like you can put them in your system or uh, adding some more drills of your own. So let's start with uh, the first drill that we said when we went to on ball and uh, help defense. Uh, we got uh, the players spread out in uh, on the floor in two lines. We have the coach, uh, as you can see, I'm pointing with my cursor here in the middle of the floor so he can see everyone. 
and we have the step slide. How do we start here? We put the players, we, we get them uh, to the proper stance. We need, as we said, them to start with the lead foot. If they want to go left, they should move the left foot first. We don't want a negative step. Negative step is if you want to go left, to move your right foot first and then your left foot. That will, it's like taking two steps to move one time. So we don't want that. We need step slide, one step to the direction we're moving and the following foot uh, sliding and following our movement. We need to open and work all together. We start doing these drills in our teams. We start doing these drills slowly, slowly, one slide, one step slide slow, another step slide slow until we get to a faster pace and we make the players uh, use some footwork on their toes and then start sliding to different directions with the coach's uh, call. But before that, we need to teach step slide, stay low, keep the gap between your legs steady. Don't change your center of gravity. Stay at the same level the whole time and communicate. It's very important to talk. Our next drill, as we said, is the mirror drill. We have two players holding the ball, one leader and one follower. So two players are in the stance. They hold one ball together and the leader decides where he wants to move. Again, at the beginning, very slow. So the follower can read and react on his movement and follow the same way. We start with, st with step slides. Uh, we start with open steps. We start with a little bit of running later. And then we give the, the opportunity to the leader uh, to start uh, moving freely. And we see how good the follower is on keeping his stance and uh, reacting on the leader's moves. The next drill that we saw and we said is like one-on-one -on -one, uh, hands behind the back. Here again, we don't go 100%. Uh, the ball handler tries to work on uh, 60 to 70%. The defender follows the ball handler's move the whole time. We focus on the footwork. We focus on the slide. We focus on closing, on not closing uh, the, the distance between their legs, on uh, staying on the same level and keeping always their nose on the ball. And uh, taking it to the next level is one-on-one -on -one again with free hands and turn the dribbler. Again, we are not going 100%, we are about 70%. Uh, we want the defender to make a big slide step at the end of each direction and jump in front of the ball to force the dribbler change his direction. This is a key for uh, our full court defense. Uh, we try to force the ball handlers change sides as many times as possible. And uh, we keep our hands active uh, in the ball the whole time. And the hardest part, and uh, we complete this drill by going one-on-one -on -one full court competitive. Uh, here, as we said, um, we make them play until they get a stop. We make them play until they get two stops or something. It's a competitive drill. We force the players to be aggressive. We force them to stay in front of the ball the whole time. If they get beat, which it shouldn't happen, they have to use their running defense and a small V cut to jump in front of the ball again and stop the ball handler and make him change uh, his dribble. Now, on the two men uh, guard ball and open deny position, here you can see these two players are stationary. So they pass the ball, our defenders react. You can see this defender slightly overplaying the middle and forcing to the side or to the baseline. And this player jumping to the ball, we, you see we are talking about high level teams. We do not play here. We don't play deny defense. We play open deny in a position that can see the ball and his man and be ready 
if this player attack here to make one step and recover to his man okay that's between the two men we start stationary and then we make them play a little bit uh, more uh, live and, and become more aggressive same thing goes for the three players we pass the ball we adjust our position we have uh, three players playing stationary and then they go live remember what we said about being two passes away from the ball imagine one passes the ball to three and the ball gets here we talked about high eye and low eye now you can see here imagine draw, drawing a line from here to there it's like a letter i so when the ball from one goes to three our one defender will jump a little bit to the ball but our two defender will be almost there so that's a low eye position that's a low eye position this is where we have to focus so the defenders get the proper positions and stance every time the ball is moved when the ball is in the air they have to run and take their positions then as we said we start one on one two on two then we go stationary we go slowly we go harder we go live now let's go to the next uh, part of our defense which is the closeout defense we have these two pairs these two players as a pair these two players and these two players and so on they stay there they use their footwork they work on their toes they stay low when the coach calls they touch hands and they close out to the side they touch hands and they close out to the side every time they change their side they change position so here we have to close out with our right foot uh, first two four six and eight they have to close out with the right foot first and the right hand up and uh, one three five and seven they should close out here with their left foot first and their left hand up always in a stance always one hand on the ball always one hand deflecting all the passes and playing all the passing lanes okay it's important we focus on footwork sprint a couple of steps slowly and small steps after that a more complicated closeout drill is this one that you can see here we have four players outside with one ball each and we have four players inside again in the same way all these four players the blue ones they start working on their footwork when the coach calls they touch each other hand but now the back side players we close out high and the high side players we close out low so that means one and two will close out on three and four and three and four we close out on one and two after they close out the outside players will use one or two dribbles max right or left to force the four defenders react and use a slight step to stop the ball handler okay so it's just one dribble right or left every time to get the close out and the first reaction after the first dribble of course as we said every time the players change their positions they go front back right or left so they can close out in every side in every side in every direction with a different way this is a drill i like a lot this is a drill i love and i use it quite often in my practices uh, especially when we have defensive uh, drills and close out drills this is a drill that I, I use a lot we have three lines as you can see two lines at the foul line extended 45 and one line under the basket this is a drill that i focus a lot on communication 
Of course, we said in every drill, all the players, when they play defense, they should talk. But this one takes a lot out of them. So we have uh, the ball on number one. Five will close out on number one. One will beat him. Five will stay with him. And at the same time, five will call ball, 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 ball when he close out. He will get beat. And uh, number, uh, number six, number six will jump. He will call help, 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 help. And he will stop the penetration of one. At the same time, one will kick the ball out to three. And six from here will close out on three. Again, calling ball, 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 ball. And three will penetrate. And seven will step in to stop the penetration and call help, help, help. Then every player rotates one position towards uh, the direction he moved. But this is a good uh, drill. Very hard drill for the players. Has a lot of intensity. I usually run this drill for two or three minutes uh, in my defensive practices. And you can see the players after that uh, are, are dead. Uh, they need to talk. They need to hustle. They need to close out hard. They need to slide, they need to recover, and uh, they need to be able to, to play in every situation. Now, we're going on a, a more live and scoring drill. So we got the players in four corners. As you can see, the ball is on number one. Number one will make a direct pass. My bad. We went back, sorry. So number one will make a direct pass to number two and he will run diagonally to number three. Number two will make a direct pass to three and he will run diagonally to number four. Three will pass to four and then we start the drill with one and two playing defense and three and four playing offense. So it's a two on two drill. We try to keep the ball and the players on one side and we go on a two on two uh, aggressive drill. After that, every player moves one position towards the direction of the pass and we keep going on. If we got many players, we can split in two baskets and work with our assistant coaches and uh, take uh, both sides and work uh, for more repetitions and stuff. Also a very demanding drill because the players have to sprint, have to close out, have to be ready to communicate and play two on two defense. We take it to the next step. The same drill uh, can be applied on a three on three. Let's say one has the ball here. Again, direct pass runs diagonally. Two will make a direct pass, will run vertically. Three will make a direct pass, will run diagonally. And then four will move the ball to five and five to six. And these three players, four, five, and six, will attack against these three players, one, two, and three. Now you will ask me why they don't just match up uh, with the players that are opposite them. This is the situation that we face in the game. We are trying to run in offensive transition. We make a turnover. We get back on our offense, we have to match up anywhere. So we force our players to change direction, match up and get back and play three on three. Again, at the end of the drill, we rotate one spot towards the direction of the pass. The next one, we're getting to the five against four closest man rule demands a lot of running and a lot of talking. We have five stationary players outside in offense. And then we have four players inside on defense. So if the ball is in the middle, this should be the formation of our players. After every pass, we try, as we say, with the closest man rule to cover the ball the first pass and the last player 
to go down and play between two players always. Offense, after five or seven passes, it depends on the coach, they go live. They go live. And we try to defend with four players against five. That takes a lot of running, a lot of hustle, a lot of communication. And uh, believe me, the, the satisfaction for the defense once you manage to get a stop four against five, it's very big. It's, it's when the players start understanding and start believing that uh, defense can make the difference because uh, usually players believe that offense makes the difference. It's not like that. Uh, we coaches know that defense is what makes the difference in, in every game. So, finishing all that, we're moving to the... I'd say the, the, the classic, the most classic part of, uh, of building and developing and repeating our, uh, our defense, which is the shell drill. In the shell drill, we can go through every scenario. We can go through every scenario of our defensive concept. Uh, I will tell you something before we move to the next drill. I'll tell you a true story. I am taking over a team uh, high level team and uh, after teaching uh, my defense I am trying to use the shell drill as a warm up drill for the first 15 minutes of the practice before we go to the stretching uh, we, we, what I expected to be so simple and so easy for the players to execute it took me 55 minutes it took me 55 minutes to walk through all the concepts of the shell drill without the players getting confused and understanding what they should do. I'm talking about a high-level team where the players supposedly uh, were familiar with all that and they could uh, adjust on, uh, and execute a, a shell drill defensively. So I planned 15 minutes workout for the shell drill to warm up and it took me 55 minutes to execute all the scenarios and uh, move to, to the next part of our practice. That's why I told you players are never too old to execute the fundamentals on defense or offense. So first part is stationary for men. We pass the ball, we match up, we call ball, one pass, help, one pass, I'm pass, I got pass, I got ball, I got help. Okay, all the players communicating and moving. Next part is offense tries to drive in the gap. Uh, we said we do not over help. So four, as he plays open denied defense, we'll use just one step, just one open step, and then return with one big step to close out to his man. Four, will never turn his back to his man. If he turn his back and come to overhelp here, then we have a backdoor move or an open shot. So always keep your eye on your man, drop step, stun the ball handler, intimidate him and get back to your man. That happens even if the ball goes here, even if the ball drives there. So we attack the gaps, we help and we recover. The next part uh, is uh, pass and cut. The next part is pass and cut. So we pass the ball, one passes to two. He tries to cut. Remember, no face, no face cuts. So one should jump in front of him and cut with him, either looking at the ball and opening and always keeping his eyes to the ball or just playing and changing hand for, to play over play as, as you coaches want to do it. And then one goes to the corner, X1 stays on a help side defense and four flashes high and X4 step up and follow him at the right position. So we got pass and cut, we communicate, we jump to the ball, we take away the face cuts. 
Here, when we go back to the drives, it's the most difficult part of penetrating and helping in our difference. We have the baseline drives. Remember when we said before uh, that uh, the man that gets beat will take the second pass. Let's go to our diagram. O4 receives a pass from O1 and he will drive baseline. Let's say X4 gets beat. Now, if O4 gets stopped from X3 before, always before he enters the paint, always before he enters the paint, okay, and O4 passes the ball to three, then one and then two, I'm sorry, two should drop. And if three passes to two, X4 should take the second pass, which is two. Okay, so the man getting beat continues to the same direction, but always takes the, fair, the second pass. The, the opposite wing will take the first pass. The man that gets beat will take the second pass. Another driving situation that we need to help from the weak side. Here, let's say, like before, one penetrates the gap, four, stun him a little bit and he recovers to his man because he got a shooter here and he cannot overhelp. So who is going to stop? O1, O3 should step up and stop O1. Now, on this pass, to O3, 2 should drop, and X1, if he gets beat, he goes back to O2 man. So we have 1, 2, 3 man rotation as well here. This takes a lot of repetition and a lot of patience for the coaches. Communicate, talk, the players should be talking, help, pass, I'm here, I got ball. They have to stay vocal the whole time. We're moving to one more part of the shell drill, which is uh, the screen away. Okay, we said in this situation, the ball is at the opposite side of the floor. Draw a line from here to the other basket. So when we pass the ball, and we have a parallel screen, we can either go through or we can switch. First, we start by going through, which is the hardest part. X1 will open, X2 will go through and stay first at the position when O2 will get here. Okay, the same goes for the uh, vertical screens. If two screens for three, uh, X2 will open, X3 will go through. Now, after executing the shell drill and all that, uh, we are getting into a, a more, more specific uh, situations when it comes to our, uh, our defense. We build our defense and we go to specific situations getting into the off-ball screens. Off-ball screens can be for guards, can be for bigs, can be for anyone. Uh, let's say here we got some turnout screens for the guards. We got too many uh, offensive concepts in uh, modern basketball with turnout screens for, our, for, for the shooters. So our rule, our rule, we have the ball here with the coach the the coach another coach here setting a screen with a pillow with a mat and o1 coming off he's not allowed to curl now he's not allowed to curl because there is no help uh, his defender will have to trail as a shadow we pass the ball there the coaches get out of the way and we play one on one with three dribbles max so the defender stays at his path, trails, close out, and takes away middle and defense one on one. Okay. Next concept is again for the guards. It's a pin down screen. 
a zipper screen uh, with the ball at the same side of the screen, at the same side of the floor. So we said here, we try to deny and reject the screen. So the defender is on top of one, he pushed him off the screening angle. Coach passed the ball, again coaches get out of the way and we play one-on-one -on -one with three dribbles. Same situation with a pin down screen, but with the ball at the opposite side. So here, we take our position as help side. When he start moving, we move to him and we jump through. We jump through. Okay, we close out hard. And again, here we play one on one. Basic cross screens for the big guys. Again, coach with the ball 45, coach with the ball at the low post, his screen opposite. Uh, the offensive player tried to run from the low or the top side. Our defender will break the screen from the top side or the low side. Again, this is up to your philosophy. This is up to your philosophy. Okay, and we try to deny. It's Here we're teaching and we're focusing on the low post defense as well. Before he received the pass, we play three quarters defense. We have our hand in the passing lane. We stay low. We push. We make sure the big guys understand that defense is played before his man receives the ball. If his man receives the ball, then it's very hard to defend. Here, another situation. We have the diagonal screen for the big guy. Our defender jump from the top or the low side depends on your philosophy. We emphasize on that. Always uh, we beat him to the spot and we play three quarters defense. And again, we feed the big guy and we go three uh, with three dribbles max, one on one. Before we go to this part, because I told you pick and roll defense and def defensive transition is a completely different thing. Let's go back to our off ball screen situations. Now, we can build our off ball screen one on one, as you can see here. The next step we can do is put a defender on the coach that has the ball to pass so when once they come off the screen here we put the coach instead of a coach another player and only one coach screening so it's another player here and his defender this guy come off this guy trail this guy jump to the ball and he recover and they play two on two on that concept after that we can change it we can put a coach here with the ball and a big guy screening with his defender. So the big guy should step up, should be ready to take away the curl. And then once they pass the ball, this coach gets out of the way and they play two on two, one big and one guard. The same can happen here. We go from one on one to two on two with two perimeter players to two on two with one perimeter and one big guy and of course we go back and we go here with three on three here with three on three and here with three on three and so on so you can understand that we start building our defense on ball and off ball from one on one to two on two three on three getting into the shell drill and the five on five uh, as i said before one last part uh, we have the pick and roll defense with the concepts that we explained to you before and uh, the transition defense uh, that for me are two completely uh, different parts of the game they are completely different parts of the game so we have to teach uh, on on different uh, and separate uh, courses like uh, because pick and roll defense is a huge 
a huge part and also tra transition defense is another huge part so we have to focus on these two parts separately um, again starting from our uh, starting to build our man-to-man -man defense we go from uh, on-ball defense one pass distance help side defense we try to teach fundamentals positioning stance communication we try to make the players understand that they have to execute for 24 seconds on every defensive effort they should not uh, stop after that we try to emphasize on every off ball screen situation uh, from one on one to two on two and three on three and uh, we finish uh, as we said with the, with the shell drills and uh, we get into our five on five well thank you very much uh, for your uh, for your attention now we're getting into the last part of uh, of our uh, of our clinic uh, i'm here ready to take any any questions uh, from all of you uh, as you saw at the last slide um, there was my email and my whatsapp so i'll be more than uh, happy to share uh, all the details um, with uh, with everyone uh, anything you want uh, you can use my mail or my whatsapp you can text me uh, or mail me and uh, not only about uh, this uh, topic but uh, about any other topic we can discuss uh, on uh, when it comes to basketball, uh, I'm more than happy to, to share uh, all my experience uh, with, with everyone. So I'm here um, for you to, to, to apply on, uh, to answer on, on any questions. Coach Mahmoud, uh, I'm here and ready to hear any questions. Thanks again. Yeah, there is many quotes. First of all, really amazing uh, clinic and amazing information from professional coach. I would uh, start first with uh, uh, many uh, coaches are watching and they write many greetings for you and uh, we send you also our records. Thank you very much. It's, it's a pleasure and, and an honor. I try to go really quickly through some concepts and as I told to the coaches, it's very, very important that uh, when we execute and we teach, we focus a lot on details because there are too many details uh, based on, uh, on the defensive concepts so we can uh, make a, and build a good defensive team i see let's go directly to our question and i will start from the last point you mentioned in the last uh, uh, about the pick and roll and one of the coaches asked you what is your uh, rule about the pick and roll between the big guy the big uh, guy and the uh, point guard should they go under should go they between or what what is your rule um basically we um, as coaches i will say something very 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 general first as coaches we should uh, we i believe we should have one uh, one or two basic uh, differences when it comes to pick and roll of course we have to teach our players everything because uh, according to the scouting sometimes we need to make small adjustments but i believe that uh, we should keep like a couple of uh, of basic rules in our defense let's say for me in in the middle pick and roll in the middle pick and roll uh, we always we always go over we always put a lot of pressure we want to put a lot of pressure on the ball and we go over and uh, i like to i like when i have uh, mobile big guys i like to hedge hard uh, if i don't have so mobile big guys i still go over with the guard and i play flat hedge with my big guy uh, one step back so he can react and retrieve on the pick and roll. I see. Uh, uh, what you prefer to uh, tell point guard to guard the, the offense till the uh, sideline or maybe to the middle and then he will get ahead from the big guy from the center? Uh, repeat again. Uh, the, the small guy, you mean on a, on a full court defense? The Yes, or on the half court defense, okay. the point guard, mm -hmm. when he make man to man mm -hmm. from the half court, should he guard the uh, ball to the side 
uh, line or to the middle and then he got support from the center? No, no. For me, I prefer to push the ball. As I said at the beginning, I prefer to push the ball on the sidelines. But uh, okay. in basketball, there is no mistake. As I said, uh, an example, Real Madrid, uh, they have Tavares. Uh, he's like 7'2". He's the best uh, shot blocker in Euroleague. Uh, Coach Lasso from Real. I know that he wants to push the ball in the middle and force uh, everybody to go on Tavares. If you have Tavares, it's easy to push in the middle. But for me, I prefer to go on the side. In which cases you prefer to make switches between the point guards? Uh, position 1, 2, 3. In which positions? In which cases uh, you recommend that the, the player should make switch in man-to-man? You always ask for a switch or sometimes you, you tell the players to don't make any kind of switches in man-to-man when there's screen or mm -hmm. handoff or any... I'll tell you, coach. Uh, firstly, firstly, when I start building my defense, when I start teaching my players at the beginning of the season, I do not let them switch. Uh, why is that? Because uh, switching is the easy way for the players. So at the first part of uh, my preparation, when I start building my my defense and my my team, I I tell them not to switch, so they can be responsible for their players. But once they start executing what I want, uh, then for sure we switch every guard to guard uh, situation. For sure we switch every guard to guard situation, and uh, very often we switch with the four as well. Okay. One of the coaches asked, uh, what is your advice uh, to teach the under-16 uh, the basics or much better uh, close-out? How, how they should teach the under-16 much better close-out? Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's a couple of kids that they should, uh, they should focus uh, for the younger kids. First of all, the, the kids should be taught uh, the stance, the balance and the way to close out. As we said, uh, the first uh, two-thirds of the distance should be a sprint and the last one-third of the distance uh, should be with small steps, uh, lowering their, uh, their body, putting their weight back. Uh, it would be a good idea for, uh, for younger teams to play competitive games, three-on-three, four-on-four, and giving points to the defense. So that will uh, give a great motivation to the young players to play defense and then you can push them on the closeout defense as well. I see. Uh, you are also the national coach of Qatar. What is the, or how long is the preparation period you think it's enough to prepare a national team? Oh, this is, this is a very big, uh, very big conversation we can have. Uh, now that uh, we have uh, this uh, system with the windows, uh, it's very it's very hard for the national teams to prepare properly. Uh, so you only get like 10 days, 12 days maximum to prepare properly. This is why I suggest and what we try to do, especially in Qatar, because we have a very young team and all the players now in the national team are uh, until 22, 23 years old. Uh, we try to, keep, to take them at least for one month in the summer to work with them so they can understand and they can adjust on the system that we want to play. And we have some uh, tournaments abroad. Uh, so when, when it's time to get ready for the windows, uh, the, the 10 days will be okay for us to, to refresh everything and get back to our system. But uh, if you don't have an experienced team and uh, if you don't have... Uh, players that have played for you before and they know your system, you need a lot of time to make them understand. In which topics, coach, you focus between the windows? Between, I mean, like your first window and second window for the national team. In which topics you uh, focus in your practice? It's, uh, it's more tactics. We focus, first of all, a lot of, uh, a lot of attention we pay to our execution, how we, we execute our offense and defense. And the second part is the scouting of the, of the opponents. But uh, we try not to give the players too many information. We try to keep it simple, like few plays, a uh, few basic concepts on defense, but execute as, uh, as good as possible. Because it's a small time, and if you give the players too many informations about offense and defense, 
then they will not be able to execute. Uh, one of our players uh, asked you what is your advice, how can you advise the players to uh, break the screen and try to get uh, closer to the uh, ball and uh, yeah, especially oh. in one uh, against one or two against two. Okay, the, the key for me, uh, I teach my players before they attack, let's say we're talking about off-ball screens first, no, no pick and roll, no ball screen. No, off-ball screens. Uh, when they try to break the screen, I, I encourage my players to make a small V cut towards their player. Make a small V move and attack their player, initiate the contact with their player before he uses the screen. So they can use a small push to get their uh, player out of the screening line. That will give them space and time to break the screen and be on the right spot. Because if the, if the offensive player creates separation, then the defense will always get stuck on the screen. I see. It seems to be also the, the same question about if, if there is a pick and roll, mm -hmm. how he can uh, uh, avoid uh, that he get a, a good screen and maybe he go uh, closer to the defense even if he has got the ball when he got screen. Always attack the ball. When when uh, this is this is something that you built in your defense and it, it has to do with the communication and the trust of the players. When let's say the guard hear from the big guy that there is a screen coming, the guard should be confident that the big guy will be there to help him. So he should attack the ball hard, attack the ball hard and force his uh, player to, to not use the screen properly and uh, make a dynamic step over the screen and stay in front of him all the time. Coach, at the end, I would like to say a big thanks from me and from all the coaches and all the members in Basketball Basics and the coaches uh, uh, who watch you. I'm really proud to have you in our clinic and uh, wish you all the best in your career. And uh, I will uh, say, uh, yeah, you already give us amazing information, amazing uh, drills, and I hope all the coaches are satisfied. And if, uh, if there's any more question, uh, I will write to you and we will answer them uh, maybe today at night or tomorrow, okay. even uh, we write the answers at the group. Okay. Thank you so much and I will leave you to close uh, with your words and uh, we wish you uh, best of luck. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, it's a pleasure for me, as I said to everyone. Uh, it was great uh, sharing uh, information and uh, and the knowledge with uh, all you guys. Uh, thank you very much. I will... Uh, show you one more time here uh, if you allow me uh, the the my email address and my whatsapp in case uh, some of you want to use it uh, you can text me you can send me anything you want you can send me all your questions i'm sorry for that I apologize it's my first online uh, <laughs> clinic uh, you can send me any questions you want. I can share with you all the all the presentation uh, we had here today. There you go. So this is uh, my email, coachianarazmail.com. My WhatsApp is uh, 0035799612144. Thank you one more time for uh, for your time and for your attention. It was a pleasure. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Is that? Is that?